Good afternoon, everyone. 100 million people under some kind of winter warning threat alert in the U.S. along with high wind advisories. Our atmosphere has just turned a corner with the intensification of the grand solar minimum. Incredible windstorm Mount Washington winds at 275 kilometers per hour. First ever recorded Category 5 typhoon in the Pacific in February. Wind so intense sucking fish out of the water. Malta, Sicily, intense windstorms in Norway, 120 mile per hour winds across Iceland, never before seen cloud formations in Romania, 120 mile per hour Bora winds across the Dalmatian coast in Croatia. We'll take a look at the walls across Dubrovnik. Decreases in global temperature as decreases in solar activity match. And as we look forward out into 2030, we haven't seen this type of solar decline in 400 years. This is why we're seeing the mix-ups in our jet streams and our atmosphere. Yet when I talk about the Japanese government official report, what would happen when Mount Fuji erupts in Tokyo and Chiba in the ash falls? 12 likes, 3 comments, Zero views. I wonder if my video is being messed with in the YouTube platform. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit. Two week food supply, 1500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. It's very apparent now that Earth's atmosphere is adjusting to our weakening magnetosphere as the sun goes into a four hundred year lull in solar activity. The jet streams are in the wrong places. We're seeing cloud bands across the planet move and shift. The intertropical convergence zone is moving more north. So I'll bring you here a matchup in global temperatures with solar activity. Now the boxes match up. It's very easy to look where we see declines in solar activity equal declines in global temperature. But this is just in the last 100 years. So I'm going to bring you out here to a wider time scale where our Earth is heading right now into a 400-year lull in solar activity. So you would expect gargantuan changes, changes we've never seen before in multi-generations, and we're at the cusp right now. All these changes in our atmosphere occurring at the same exact time, everybody across the planet is beginning to understand Something's not right, and they're searching for different answers. It's not CO2. It's not you. It is the sun. 100 million people under some kind of winter weather alert, as well as high wind advisories in the United States. Throughout the Northeast, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, and heading west into Iowa, Illinois, Michigan, and Buffalo, New York. We got Wisconsin, winter weather warnings, upper Midwest, Virginia, Ohio Valley, Arkansas, Sierra Nevadas, all the way over in California with the new arc storm approaching. All time record snows in Seattle, and it continues and continues and continues. Bomb cyclone, over half a million people still without power, fierce winds. This is what the video is all about is these wind storms all occurring in the Northern Hemisphere right now. And I hope I can put it together the best to really give you a frame of reference as to what's happening in our atmosphere. Now, the gusts are about 60 miles per hour, and that's very tame and mild compared to what's happening in Europe. Outstanding winds recorded at Mount Washington Observatory. It's the same kind of lexicon used again and again. Unprecedented, outstanding, unbelievable, never seen, never recorded. Incredible wind gusts, 275 Kilometer per hour of winds. And I know those of you in the States want to know what the mile per hour conversion is. 171 miles per hour. Now those were the gusts. And we're looking at the far right side of the chart here. So it pegged on 
the Hayes chart, so perhaps it was even higher than that. But you have to understand the average wind speed for a full one hour was 138 miles per hour for a full hour. That was the average wind speed. We saw the airliner transiting Los Angeles to London setting a world speed record as a passenger aircraft going over 800 miles per hour propelled by these same exact tailwinds. Different location across the U.S., but here we are again. Exceptional winds in the jet streams right now. And as we move east across the planet, we're going to take you over here to Iceland. 120 mile per hour winds, severe windstorm moving across Iceland. And of course, since Norway and Iceland are so close together, intense windstorm developing over Norway. Deep cyclone pushing across. And I thought, well, how deep is the deep cyclone? Here's the wind map for you. 200 kilometers per hour. Again, 120 mile per hour winds. That dark purple and the grays and golds at the top there, that's where the extreme wind line is. Anything in red is 50 to 60 miles per hour. So you can see how much wind there is across Europe. I'm going to take you back to Malta here a couple days ago. Intense windstorm, pulling fish out of the water in the Mediterranean and dumping them miles inland. This is how much wind is across the entire Mediterranean. And we have it officially recorded, the worst windstorm ever recorded on Malta. February 24th, a couple of days ago, what you're seeing with the white in the image on the sea there, that's wind blowing mist out of the water because the velocity of the wind speed is so high that it's turning the water into a vapor on the surface. And when I saw this, surfs up in Italy, big swell on Sicily, I thought, you for sure don't want to end up doing a header into the rock right there. Because I do surf and I enjoy the sport so much, blending with nature, getting into that zone where only the drop on the wave happens. It's very freeing of the mind because your focus goes down to one single spot that you're looking at for those few seconds while you drop in. I wanted to see how large the waves were. Looks about head high, maybe a little bit bigger right off the coast. Beach break. Surf up in Italy? That's really strange. That doesn't mix. And jumping over to the Dalmatian coast in Croatia. Bora winds, also known as Bura winds. 120 miles per hour and they're seeing that same fog effect where the velocity of the wind over the sea surface is instantly turning the water into a mist that's what you're seeing right there this is the ferry from split over to borac they actually suspended service because the winds were too intense even for these ferries and you have to realize that this is a passenger and vehicle ferry they're massive i traveled on one of these while in Croatia, so stable, yet the wind and waves were too intense for these large vessels to transit. And you have to realize this isn't full on open ocean. There's a set of islands out there that's making a barrier before you really get into the Adriatic. And this is what it is coastal right here. I can't even imagine further out what it would be like where there was no blocking effect going on from the coast. Alan, thanks for the message here. Severe Weather EU, intense Buda winds, Dubrovnik. Look at the size of the waves in Dubrovnik. Also, Brach, that C is pronounced ch in Croatian. And their peak wind gust right at 120 miles per hour. You know, I traveled in Croatia, one of my favorite countries, a must visit spot on the planet. The walls are bohemoths in themselves. Sieges through the centuries, sieges by nature through the centuries as well. Massive walls going up almost 200 feet inside the city. Hills, which are now steps leading to restaurants, cafes, and into the central plaza. If you're a fan of history, architecture, and seaside environment, this place is for you. Wherever you step through the corridors in the city, vistas of the mountains, we visited during Christmas and the New Year, and the symbology and their intertwining of hermetic traditions is found across all the cathedrals, through the churches, through the alleyways, 
through the entrances into the city. And those of you who understand the hidden traditions will see the blending of the lion and the owl. Visible, if you know what to look for. Lenticular cloud satellite view with airplane window view on the right. All caused by high winds across the Dalmatian coast, February 25th. But the ground view here, stunning images. Not only is the coastline a full-on display of electric geology, but some of the clearest water in the Mediterranean and these lenticular clouds to add the contour. And then over to Romania in the exact same time frame, what are these clouds? These iridescent clouds have never been observed in Romania. I want to wide some of these out here. This is so stunning, so unbelievable. And I ask you, how would you describe this to somebody 500 years in the future as to what we witnessed? As the sun goes into its low activity state and we are seeing the changes in our atmosphere, would you carve it on stone? How would you describe it? Now, continuing over through Asia to the Pacific Ocean, Typhoon Wu Tip, 160 miles per hour. First Category 5 typhoon ever recorded in February in the Pacific. And the news stories continue on talking about how rare of an event it is. First time ever passed over Guam, but it intensified after it passed. And on record from the historical hurricane tracking database, only seven January and February typhoons, Category 4 or 5, have been recorded in the Northwest Pacific since records began in the 1940s, but Wu Tip is in a category of its own. Super Typhoon High Ghost, 150 miles per hour. This was in February 2015, but it seems to be an uptick in our atmosphere, as well as everything else upticking with snowfalls, rain, drought, but somehow, the IPCC still wants you to believe that it's CO2 and not even to look at the sun. The sun has nothing to do with it, according to these climate scientists that are getting paid for their research to prove that CO2 drives the climate. Now, I talked about in a podcast episode, the Japanese government did a full-funded study about what the effects would be when Mount Fuji erupted as it did in 1707 what the effects would be on Tokyo and Chiba in terms of ashfall from everything from four inches up to three feet. This was a widely publicized study. University of Chiba, University of Tokyo, as well as a gamut of other government institutions inside Japan put this report together. Publicly released, and I just covered the findings. And in the first couple of minutes while releasing the video, 12 likes, three comments... Zero views. This seems to happen a lot on the information being released around the Grand Solar Minimum and any causation that's not CO2 that doesn't follow the established narrative. So look below the video to see if you get a Wikipedia entry because that is another way that they're trying to make you not think about anything other than CO2. Now pay your global carbon tax and go back to work and pay your regular taxes and pay for inflation because your food prices are going up. And also, when you're looking at video views, you know something's definitely wrong with the metrics because you never get that high of a like count. At the maximum, it's 10%. Usually, it's around 5 to 8. Not one out of every seven people liking the video in the beginning. So if you'd like to continue to support the research that I do and the information I bring you, paypal.me forward slash adapt2030. You can choose either venue. I'm still on both. But if you want to learn more about the Grand Solar Minimum, many Ice Age conversations, 30 minutes on the go, in an audio podcast format, and a rundown on the ADAPT 2030 social media links, which also includes minds.com forward slash ADAPT 2030 and gab.ai forward slash ADAPT 2030.